Hello, boys and girls. Mr. Palst here. So nice to see you. Got a haircut yesterday. What do you guys think? Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if not. Thumbs in the middle, maybe. All right. I got a great story for you today. Sorry, there we're doing dismissal, so that'll be going on. We'll do our best to pay attention, okay? Because there are distractions in life sometimes, and sometimes in the classroom, we gotta do our best to focus. All right, so I have a great story today um, about rabbits, conejos. I love rabbits, um, and this is from the um, the World Books Animal of the World. Um, they have like a series of these books. And this is called Cottontails and Their Relatives. Uh, we're not going to read the entire story, just a couple of pages. It was a really long read, uh, a lot of important information, but I just want to focus on a, a couple of chapters. Okay. So, the first heading I'm going to look at is where in the world do these animals live? That's the heading. And here are the pictures. We got a swamp rabbit. Desert cottontail, the Arctic hare, and the brush rabbit. Cottontails and their relatives live nearly everywhere in the world. Wild rabbits and hares are found on every continent except Antarctica. About half of all kinds of rabbits and hares live in North America. Bikas live in Europe, Asia, and Western North America. These various animals make their homes in meadows, mountains, deserts, rainforests, swamps, and grasslands, even on the frozen tundra. These animals thrive in all types of climates. You can often tell where one of these animals lives from its name. The swamp rabbit you see here likes swampy habitats. It is a good swimmer. The desert cottontail, on the other hand, prefers a hot, dry climate. The Arctic hare lives in the far north. The brush rabbit makes his home in thick, overgrown bushes. Oh, I love them all. So cute. Okay. So, our next heading. I don't forget to have this cutie right here. That's the mountain cottontail. I'm going to pet him. Uh, our next heading is, what do cottontails like to eat? And that's what I'd like to know. Like other rabbits, cottontails are herbivores. That means they only eat plants. They enjoy short grass, clover, lettuce, weeds, and leafy bushes. They also like fruits and berries. And of course, cottontails love carrots, if they can find them. In winter, it is often hard for cottontails to find food. They will eat twigs, bark, roots, and old berries when they can't find leafy greens. Cottontails sometimes drink water, but not that often. That's because the plants they eat are very moist and juicy. So they get a lot of their water from the plants that they eat. Interesting. Okay. Oh, here we got a good heading for a question that I know I've thought about. Oh, this fuzzy guy. That's the cottontail. And this heading goes, <clears throat> Is a cottontail's tail really cotton? No. Its tail is covered with soft, fluffy fur. The tail is about two inches, five centimeters long. The bottom of the tail is white. It looks like cotton. So that's how the cottontail got its name. A cottontail is not white all over. However, most of its body is brown or gray. The dark color blends in with the rabbit's surroundings. If it senses danger, a cottontail may lie very still. That way, its enemies won't see it. Cottontails are very clean animals. They keep their fur in good shape by licking it. They also wet their paws and use them like washcloths to wash their fur. Did not know that. Cottontails take time. Cottontails take time to clean themselves, but they never need haircuts. Like all lagomorphs, cottontails shed their fur every year. 
Their summer coats are shorter, softer, and thinner than their winter coats. I love this bunny. Ooh, this one's gonna be a tough read. Looking at that right away, it says Cottontail and Enemy. Oh no. Run away, little Cottontail. What enemies do Cottontails have? Cottontails have many enemies in the wild. Their enemies include foxes, wolves, weasels, coyotes, rats, and snakes. Foxes may steal baby Cottontails from their nests. Weasels may chase Cottontails down their burrows even through narrow tunnels. Ground enemies are not the only one cottontails fear. They also have enemies in the air. Eagles, hawks, and owls swoop down on them from the sky. Cottontails are usually helpless against such attacks. Because they have so many enemies, most cottontails do not survive more than a year in the wild. Pet rabbits, however, may live five years or more. I did not know that. Wow. So many facts. We're learning about the cottontail. This is great. Oh, look at this guy. This look, looks like he's like checking something out. What's that noise? What's going on over there? And this is cottontail on alert. He's definitely alert. How does a cottontail avoid danger? A cottontail uses all its senses to avoid danger. Its eyes are on the side of its head, so it can see to the side, front, and even to the back, all at the same time. It can also see well at night. A cottontail relies on its nose and ears, too. When it smells or hears danger, the rabbit sits up on its hind legs, straight and still. Its ears point upward, and its nose twitches. This position might warn other rabbits in the area to be alert. If the cottontail decides to hop away, it flashes his white tail at the enemy. This may confuse the predator and help the cottontail escape. For safety, a cottontail stays near cover, such as a rock or a bush. If an enemy gets too close, a cottontail hops quickly to its hiding place. They seem pretty intelligent. Good grade. Students may now be in the way that they're in the way that they're able to get away from danger. So they got, you know, so many different ways, you know, a snake can come into a burrow, a fox we learned about, uh, a hawk from the sky or an owl. It's got to be tough to be a cottontail. This is what I think of when I think of a cottontail, you know, hopping through my woods in my backyard. And this is uh, the cottontail leaping. How far can a cottontail leap? Don't let a cottontail small size fool you. This rabbit can leap. 10 feet, three meters, in a single bound. Imagine you and a friend were lying head to toe on the ground. A cottontail could leap over the length of both of your bodies in one long jump. A cottontail leaps well because of its powerful hind legs. They put spring in the rabbit's jump. The back legs are longer and stronger than the front legs. This helps the animal jump fast too. A cottontail can leap up to 18 miles, 29 kilometers, an hour. Wow, that is fast. Look at little legs. The cottontail's feet also help it leap well. The bottom of the feet are covered with hairs. They help the rabbit get a good grip on the ground before taking off. Wow, it sounds like they were made just perfect to hop around at a fast speed. All right. Oh, look at this guy. He needs petting right there. Cottontail in a form. Where do cottontails settle down? Most cottontails live alone. They rest and sleep in a shallow bowl-shaped hole called a form. It is covered with grass, weeds, and shrubs to hide the animals from their enemies. Some kind of cottontails use a form all year round. Others, especially those in colder areas, look for more protected places to rest. In winter, many cottontails take cover under piles of brush, rocks, or wood. Others spend time in underground holes called burrows. Most cottontails do not dig their own burrows. Instead, they move into burrows left behind by other animals, such as prairie dogs, skunks, and woodchucks. 
How convenient is that? Ah, they're very opportunistic, it sounds like. Have someone else make the home for them and just move right in. Oh, look at this. Baby cottontails. Oh, so cute. Uh, so cottontail nursing kits. How fast do cottontails multiply? You may have heard the phrase to multiply like rabbits. Cottontails can have lots of babies or kits. A female cottontail usually has four or five kits at a time. She may give birth four or five times a year. Do the math. If you'll find that a cottontail may have as many as 25 kits a year, that's some multiplying. A female cottontail carries her kits inside her body for about 28 days before giving birth. The mother prepares a nest that she digs in the ground. She lines the nest with hay and leaves, plus fur that she pulls off her belly. Wow. Cottontail kits are born without fur. At birth, the kits can't see or hear. Their mother covers them with grass and fur to keep them warm in the nest. At first, the kits are too young to eat regular food. But kids drink their mother's milk. That sounds like a good mother rabbit. Pulling out fur from its own belly. Oh my gosh. Look at this. It looks like he's yawning. Oh, I worked so hard in Mr. Pell's class today. And let's see. What's the caption? Cottontail kids. How do cottontail kids grow? Baby cottontails grow quickly. After about two weeks, they double their weight. They also have their own fur, and they can see and hear. At this time, kids leave their nest and hide in the tall grass nearby. By the third week, they're able to eat regular food. At about six months old, the cottontail has nearly reached its full adult size. By that age, a female cottontail is ready to have their own kits. Cottontails increase so fast that they can cause serious problems for farmers. In areas where rabbits have no natural enemies, the cottontail population may grow very fast. Cottontails can do great harm to crops and other plant lives. Eat up all those crops, I'm sure. Oh, look at this guy. I love a chubby bunny. Oh, so cute. It's showing down. All right, and this, let's see, caption. Swamp rabbit. All right. They're heading. Which cottontail is the biggest? Cottontails look similar to one another but they aren't all the same size. The largest is a swamp rabbit, which is found in the Southern United States. It grows to about 21 inches, 53 centimeters long. It can weigh up to six pounds, 2.7 kilograms. The swamp rabbit shares some of its habitat with a similar cottontail, the marsh rabbit. These cottontails look alike. Sometimes they, act, they even act alike, but will leap into the water and swim away from enemies. So how can you tell them apart? It's simple. The swamp rabbit is much bigger. The swamp rabbit may be the largest cottontail, but it is not the largest lagomorph. The swamp rabbit is about six inches, 15 centimeters, shorter than the biggest hare. It also has, it is also smaller than many rabbits raised as pets. Huh. Oh, it looks like he wants to know the answer to this question, which is, are all rabbits cottontails? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? European rabbit. No, they are not. They are all are all rabbits cottontails. No, they are not. There are many other kinds of wild rabbits. For example, the European rabbit is not a cottontail. The European rabbit is sometimes called the Old World rabbit. Long ago, it lived only in the southern Europe and northern Africa. From there, European rabbits spread to other parts of Europe. Travelers also took them to Australia, New Zealand, North America, and South America. Although European rabbits are wild, the ones you ha may have seen are tame. That's because many pet rabbits are tame European rabbits. Huh. Ah, <laughs> wait till you see this guy's eyes. Oh, look at him. That's a silly bunny. I feel like that's like what the bunny would look like if I drew it on a piece of paper. The cape hair. Are hares much different from rabbits? Hares like rabbits or lagomorphs. They look a lot alike. 
and are often mistaken for one another, but the two animals differ in a few important ways. Rabbits give birth to their young in fur-lined nests, but hares give birth on the ground. Baby rabbits are born furless with their eyes closed. They stay in the nest for a couple weeks, but newborn hares have fur and their eyes are open. In less than five minutes, baby hares are able to hop. They are ready to leave their home almost immediately. Hares usually grow bigger than rabbits. They have longer legs, feet, and ears. Hares rarely dig burrows as some rabbits do. When a rabbit senses danger, it hops for cover. It tries to run and hide from a predator, but a hare will leap long distances across an open field. It attempts to outrun its enemy. Rabbits are more social than hares. Rabbits like to live in groups, but hares usually live alone. <laughs> I just giggle looking at this guy's face. Look at this. That's the black-tailed jackrabbit. Oh, jackrabbit. When is a rabbit not a rabbit? When it's a jackrabbit. That's because a jackrabbit is a hare. It is one of several ligomorphs whose names are confusing. For example, the snowshoe hare is often mistaken called the snowshoe rabbit. And the Belgian hare is actually a breed of domestic rabbit. Despite its confusing name, you can easily tell a jackrabbit from a true rabbit. A jackrabbit is much longer. It can grow nearly 27 inches, 69 centimeters long. That's about 6 inches, 15 centimeters longer than the biggest wild rabbit. A jackrabbit may weigh up to 8 pounds. Jackrabbits live in the desert and prairies of western North America. They like to eat plants with thick, juicy leaves and stems. One of their favorite food is cactus which holds lots of water. They're eating cactus? Wow, I want to meet a jackrabbit one of these days. Ah, oh, good question. I mean, look at the size of these ears. Antelope jackrabbits. So the question is, why are jackrabbits' ears so big? I want to know. A jackrabbit's most outstanding feature is its long ears. They point straight up at the air. A jackrabbit's ears may up to eight inches long. As with all rabbits and hares, a jackrabbit's ears are shaped somewhat like a funnel. They give the hare excellent hearing. A jackrabbit can pick up many sounds that humans cannot hear. It can move its ears together or turn them, turn each one in a different direction. You can't say a jackrabbit is hard of hearing. A jackrabbit's ears are important in another way, too. They help control the animal's body temperature. In the summer, blood flows through the ears and is cooled off by the air. That keeps the hair cool. In the winter, less blood flows to the ears. That keeps the hair warm. Wow. So those ears really are important. Oh, look at this guy. Snowshoe hair. Do snowshoe hairs wear snowshoes? No, but the inventor of snowshoes probably got the idea from a snowshoe hair like this one. Its two hind feet look like snowshoes. They are very large and furry. They help the hare hop across deep snow without sinking. That's important because the snowshoe hare lives where it snows a lot. It makes its home in the forests and swamps of Canada and northern United States. The snowshoe hare is also called the varying hare. It looks varying or changing depending on the season. In the winter, the hare has a white fur coat, but it sheds that fur and grows a brown coat for the summer. Wow! The color change protects the hair from enemies. In winter, the hair blends in the snow. In summer, it blends in the soil and grass. Did not know that. Oh, look at this face. So great. This is the Arctic hair. Who has fun when it's freezing? The Arctic hair loves a good harsh winter. The animal makes its home in the coolest parts of Canada and Greenland. Winter temperatures there average about negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Brr, that's cold. Arctic hares are well prepared for freezing weather. Their thick fur coat helps them, helps them keep warm. They have shorter ears than other hares, too. This helps them save body heat. Like snowshoe hares, Arctic hares have a layer of stiff fur on the bottoms of their feet. The fur keeps the hair from sinking into the snow as it hops. The feet have sharp claws that dig into the hard snow for twigs and willow roots. Arctic hare tends to rest in the hollow spaces underneath large rocks. In a snowstorm, these hares dig tunnels in the snow for protection. 
Huh. This rabbit is so cool. All right. Last one. I love this. I can read about rabbits all day. Oh, look at that. That's a lynx right there. He's getting awfully close. Uh, hair jinking. What does a hair do when it's jinking? Jinking is a trick that hairs often use to escape from enemies. It involves hopping in a zigzag pattern to avoid being caught. Hares can move very fast. A jackrabbit, for example, can, le can leap about 45 miles an hour. Some of its enemies can run even faster. However, when a hare is about to get caught, it makes a sharp left or right turn at full speed. The hare's enemies keep running straight ahead. Wow. Fantastic. Hope you enjoyed the story. Looking for a lot of facts that you learned about the cottontail. I'll see you soon, boys and girls.